One of our favorite sponsors is back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Z- extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's- and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're given the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo, promo code. code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com. One of our favorite sponsors is back. It's crazy out there, and it's crazy in here, in, yes. in my head, too, but we are facing a global health crisis right now, and like you guys all know, because we're all in this together, our musical friends have had a tough time, and so No Simple Road and Osiris have partnered with Backline. Backline is the music industry's mental health and wellness resource hub. And their work is more vital than ever right now, you guys. They launched back in 2019, and what they aim to do is give artists, crew, and their families quick and easy access to mental health and wellness resources. Backline is currently hosting virtual support groups as well as yoga, meditation, and breathwork sessions. Mm. Osiris and No Simple Road are proud to partner with Backline. So check this out, you guys. To donate, to learn more, or to get in touch for personalized care, visit Backline. Dot care that's b a c k l i n e dot c a r e backline go donate help them out man help out our musical friends yeah. this episode yeah. of no simple road is brought to you by shop, shop tour, tour bus. bus you guys you've been at home you're wearing the same clothes day in and day out you probably haven't even put on regular pants that have a button in like <laughs> 8 weeks so check it out buy yourself a nice new Grateful Dead inspired t-shirt over at Shop Tour Bus. And because it's getting warmer, they've come out with some sweet tank tops. Mel, they heard your call. They have some really cute race and racerback is my favorite. Love that style. And they're dope, just in time. So go over to at Shop Tour Bus on Instagram or shoptourbus.com online. Get yourself a hand designed box, a bootleg, a new shirt, a hat. Some stickers. Make yourself smile because it's tough right now. We yeah. get it. Everybody's dealing with stuff. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat really, yourself. Really, really. And if you have a bunch of bootlegs laying around the house, they will barter. They need bootlegs. So we're putting out the call to the No Simple Road family. If you got bootlegs hanging out in the house that are just chilling somewhere, doing nothing, send them out so that they can go make people smile yeah. all over the world. All right, you guys? Yeah. Shoptourbus.com online or at Shoptourbus on Instagram. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, what? Do you want to know who our um, awesome rad sponsor is? Who? Define Premium Cannabis. What? What? Define has two locations, one in Hillsborough and the other is in Forest Grove. And if you stop on Monday through Friday, 
at business hours. You'll see Apple there. He'll come out of the back <coughs> dressed <laughs> oh my God, do this as time. a four-star army general. <laughs> and he will give you marching orders over to the counter. And he will direct you to how you're going to fight the battle of pain and sadness and anxiety and stress in your life by giving you your orders of which strain to buy. That's how Apple's going to take care of I you. I like that. General Cannabis. That. And that, that's him. When you go there, you say, hey, guys, I listen to the show. I listen to No Simple Road. Why? And Apple's going to be like, you know what? On top of giving you the right medicine, I'm going to give you a 10% discount and a free t-shirt. It won't have like epaulets on the sleeve like his cool general outfit or no. stars on it, but it will be a brand new t-shirt and you will have 10% off Yeah. and you will have the medicine you need and you will be educated on what you should purchase. And so. our appreciation for supporting our sponsors and supporting yourself in your mental, physical, and emotional health. It's always good to support yourself. Yeah, so you got to support yourself. So definitely stop on in, visit us, we'll get you set up, and take care of your head. It's stressful when you leave the house right now, man. That's all I'm saying. You gotta wear a mask, you gotta deal with like six feet away from everybody else, and you, the last thing you wanna do is like three o'clock in the morning you realize that you got to get up early and you haven't shaved and you got to go to the freaking grocery store and have them unlock that thing and you're wearing a mask and your glasses are fogging up now is not the time to be leaving the house to overpay for razors at the drugstore harry knows harry's knows it's sometimes better to stay inside that's why they ship directly to you so you can experience the quality of a harry's shave in just a few days from the convenience of your own home yeah we just got a box from Harry's, and their packaging is minimal. That's so true. That's fantastic, and their blades are dope. They are dope, and they have that trimmer blade on the top that you can use to shape your mustache like I did. Join the 10 million who have tried Harry's. Claim your special offer by going to harrys.com forward slash NSR. That's harrys.com forward slash NSR. Check it out, man. It's three bucks. That's it. They're three not going to nickel and dime you. Three bucks. They're going to send you all this stuff. Check this out. They're going to give you a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, a five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and a trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to keep your razor dry and easy to grab on the go when you can finally leave your house again. And you can feel good about your purchase. 100% quality guarantee. If you don't dig it, they're going to give you a full refund. And... 1% 1% of the proceeds are set aside for nonprofit organizations devoted to helping provide access to better health care for men and veterans. These guys don't screw around, man. They are the shit. So go over to harrys.com forward slash NSR. Claim your $3 trial and hook yourself up. Don't look like a weird homeless wild man at home or woman. We're so excited to tell you a bit about today's sponsor, Music Masters Collective. They are a nonprofit organization that produces unique music events, providing opportunities for fans and artists to meet and collaborate in an inspired and creative atmosphere. Music Masters Collective events give you the opportunity to learn from world-class musicians like Otil Burbridge, Steve Earle, Richard Thompson, former members of the band, the Mel Carton Kids, Nikki Glaspy, the Fab Foe, and Sean Colvin, and so many more. At an event like the Milk Carton Kids Sad Song Summer Camp, happening this July, you can expect immersive classes, evenings of entertainment, excellent food, and a space for a lucky group of folks to learn, co-write, workshop, and perform with like-minded peers, all with the guidance of Kenneth Pattengale, Joey Ryan, and some of their favorite songwriters. This all-inclusive week in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York is guaranteed to be magical. Scholarships are available, and spots are extremely limited, so visit www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple to learn more. That's www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple. Check it out. Hey everyone, Chris Pandolfi from the infamous String Dusters here to let you know that my podcast Inside the Musician's Brain is back on the airwaves for season four, which means it's time once again to get deep with influential musicians from all across the musical landscape to really understand and translate the lessons of success, failure, inspiration, and hard work 
that are behind the music and the artists that we love. My guests this season include Rachel Price from Lake Street Dives, Sam Bush, Chris Wood, Chris Funk from The Decemberists, Lindsay Liu, MC Taylor from His Golden Messenger, and more. Check us out, and thanks for listening. Friendly Podcast explores the music and fan experience of fish through interviews and deep dives on shows and tours. And Quick Hits, a review of every show of the tour the next day with someone who was there. We started HF Pod in 2013 to bring the fan voice into the discussion. We're six years in, and with the help of our guests, we're still discovering new angles of appreciation for the band we all love. Whether you're new to fish or you've been listening for years, we think you'll find something to enjoy on HF Pod. Search for the Helping Friendly Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Or find us on the web at hfpod.com. It's thought of that. That just dawned on me. Like when most of the ones you see are homeless men. That's true. When you say homeless, there are women, yeah, though, the, the, but yeah, there are. But you them. don't think of those. Well, I mean, off the top, and I don't see them as much. They're not as, out as much panhandling on the corner. Mm-mm. You know, when I hey now, no simple road family, welcome back. How you guys? Oh, doing? are we hey. home? Yeah, we're, we're, I sneakily snuck it in there. Okay, Doink. Uh, yeah. When Sneak I was in. homeless and and staying at the shelter in Vegas. The majority of individuals that I live with there in the men's work program were men's work. men, <laughs> yeah. in, well, and the, the women's men. side was minimal. So yeah. it's a crazy thing. Hey, anyway, we they, we got yeah. you guys in the middle of a conversation, yeah, yeah. The, and, and you know that's that's how we do. But that's how we do. That's how we do. Uh, anyway, how's everybody doing this week? Yay! Yay! Oh, uh, I thought you were, no, thought we were waiting to hear they back. No, they can't from answer. Them. I was actually listening. I was, I was actually listening because I know you guys probably. I bet you somebody that's listening in this probably out loud said to us how I'm they're doing. All doing. right, man. Yeah, and I appreciate. It. I hear you, man. Far out, yeah. It's, it's do, doing good. <laughs> doing good. I don't know. It seems like it seems like things are getting a little better every day. A little it's, bit. Yeah. A little bit. It's like drips and drabs. You you watch the oil drip down the lamp, and if you get that reference. You're old. All right. How about you, Mel? Um, I've been waxing and waning. I'm very much like the moon this month, you know? I'm like, How so? Well, I feel like, I feel kind of like before you go crazy, like, you know, you're sane, but you've got these crazy <laughs> thoughts, but they haven't taken over quite yet. And so I feel like that, like I'm still in the sane part. But there's a tipping point that could happen. That's like you're holding that crazy part at yeah. bay at the moment successfully. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm here. Oh. That's where I was about six weeks ago when I was talking about staring at the coffee pot and talking to myself in the morning. And yep, I know exactly how you feel, babe. Yeah, I just, I don't, I mean, there's no emergency situation that's necessary. It's just psychological um, disruptions. It's called ennui. Well, whatever, whatever it's called. The, the d- little disruptions are kind of like, I want them to go away, but I didn't put them there to begin with. So I'm <laughs> handling how they got there and how we can get rid of them. Okay. okay. That's, yeah. That's, I mean, so well, that's, that's my project right now, you know, like it's what I'm handling. The, the, there is breaks and everything, like the frequency right now. That, that's one thing that bothers I I don't feel as, it's weird. I don't feel as safe driving right now because everybody's a little more absent. My people are weaving more, including mm-hmm. myself. Are I you, did it. You're a weaver now. Uh huh. Uh-huh. This morning, this morning I, I did it. I got on the freeway and this guy was like totally weaved off over the lawn. I'm like, what a moron! Like, what are you doing? How and then, like, you, then sir. like two minutes later, I was farting around the radio and stuff oh. and i totally did it not paying attention it was like i instantly turned into that person that i just kind of scolded and was like oh okay. it's, e- it's it's just right now it's easier for my mind to wander well to just kind of like ah. you know what man speaking of like things getting better and slowly and all that this week's episode is a perfect balm for not bomb b o m b i'm talking to b a l m for yeah for the things that alia um 
Brent is an amazing human being yeah. and curation records and Pacific range and everything that he's doing. It is exactly what's needed right now. New music coming out right now is like manna in mm -hmm. the desert. Like it, it really is something that's needed. It, it, not that the old music is bad. Well, it gives the hope that things are still continuing. Yeah. That there is something still being ha like happening. Like not everything is shut down. Not no. everything is at a standstill. There's still people putting out art and and sharing it with us. You you cannot stop the creative impetus. You can't shut down the artist's drive to make new things. And then you have people like this that are willing to get behind new and upcoming artists with mm -hmm. their experience that is so hard won and like taking your, your licks and paid your dues and you're paying it forward to those guys yeah. that are coming up behind you. And <coughs> that's yeah, this, this is a very interesting dude that has a lot of experience oh in gosh. bands yeah. across all genres and it's very rooted in music. And, and I love that like LA beachy vibe. I just love that vibe. Like I've always loved it. I've always just surfer coastal kind of like that Hawaiian -y kind of all of that. It, and he, I feel like Pacific range and just his personal style. Curation keeps that, record style. Yeah. Keeps that alive. Yeah, and they, it, it feels good. <laughs> like it feels like sunshine on your it warm feels skin. like Southern California. Seventies. Yeah, so yeah, everything's totally. cool. Hang loose. Well, and, and <laughs> also it, with, with I hate to say brands, but Curation Records is a brand, and and you can tell when it's a soulless thing, when it's just a a thing, and you can feel when there's love and intention behind something. That's yeah, he puts why, so much love into you. This. You can see it in the way that they put together the vinyl for Pacific Range. You could see it in the shirts, and I all love when he talks about it in the interview yeah like how how it's like his baby and how he is bringing it to yeah, you life. can that's one thing i love now at the you guys got to seeing him when we were talking to him on this one yeah. Brent, getting to see him in his home getting to see people in their homes right now and so comfortable yeah and, and the just, dogs and are barking just, he he did he just like brent you just he he get captures that whole look feeling everything it it's, felt good. it's yeah oh yeah really good. genuine and and like he said he's like yeah i'm you know 56 and crazy but you know that's, <laughs> a, that's a, my life man i'm doing what i want to yeah. do he's just soul yeah. soul brother heads up you guys um get it heads up uh the wow. audio in this is when we go to the interview it's going to change um just be prepared i i screwed up and mixed inputs on my board and so you got one track with all of us on it and our mics aren't there. So you're hearing the zoom audio when we go into, um, in, help me out into the episode. Thank you, Apple into the interview. <laughs> the ep Yeah. It's going to sound different than the intro here. Yeah. But, but not bad. No, it doesn't yeah. sound bad. It's just different. You guys don't adjust your sets. The vertical hold would be I, fine. You know what? I just thought it kind of goes with this theme of like the 70s California. Yeah, kind of old school. Your, picture you're in 74 hanging out <laughs> down, down by Santa Monica Pier yep. and you're listening to this on the radio. I Well, actually, I did it on purpose then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was Good totally thinking. on purpose. Thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, it's, well, it's, you know, I'm, a, I'm an artist too and <laughs> yeah. I like to to come up with new and interesting we ways. We were just waiting. this episode, yeah. especially just, for you guys. just waiting for us to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, Let's see if you guys would catch on to my grand master plan. Um, so, Nothing's yeah, man. Nothing's a mistake. Remember what my mom said last week? Mm -mm. I fell down. I meant to do that. <laughs> you just keep going. Uh, if you guys haven't listened to that, man, go back and listen to the heads talking called Meet the Mothers. It, it, if you haven't heard that, it is worth that was, 40 minutes of your time. I feel like that's my proudest thing to date that we even more than having Sydney and Adam on the yeah. show and the baby. I feel like when we go into those types of episodes with our family, it to me, what happens during the conversations is magic. Like yeah. we just released your mom of a dumb little memory she had of leaving Simon and feeling bad about it. And in turn, you let go of a memory of feeling bad about mom you know like doing all the stuff you did to your mom so 
I, that's what I'm proud of. I'm proud of like the healing that takes place during those episodes and like what it does for our family. Like I felt like it made us all stronger and they felt my mom loved it. Like yeah, she, she, it was, it was amazing. I, I felt, uh, I felt so good afterwards, like knowing that, that my mom got to come on and, mm-hmm. and, be cute and hang out with us it was really rad and i'm sure your mom said the thing when i talked to my mom she she was she was very proud of it that was a great like mother's day gift to us oh shit i didn't even think about that yeah because we did it on mother's day and we got to connect with our mothers beyond because we all talked to them separately but Mm -hmm. then to have them on the my mom was like so happy to be on the show she asked me that she's like so so did people like it? Do you know? Did, oh did, man, did people, people, like, did people, people loved even it. listen? It was like, oh yeah, they, they loved it, mom. It was so, it was, it was an honor to have all of our moms on the show on the same episode. Yeah. I just think like we're all in our forties, fifties, right? And to be able to still surprise your mom and do something special for them at this age is a really big deal. Yeah. 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 Even if your mom is a jerk. My dad always told me once, one time, he said... Uh, always told me always once. Always told me <laughs> once. But no, no. Don't. <laughs> you can't. That's funny, dude. But yeah, it always told me. My dad told me once. You only, I, it's because one is in this too many times. My dad told me, you better be nice to your mom. You only get one mom. Oh, okay. That's, that. that's what I was trying to say. Well, what about step parents? It's not your mom. Yeah, it's not, not your mom. Yeah. There's that only one woman that bore you into this world, yeah. and that's it. Even if she's a hard to get along with or a jerk or whatever, you only get one mama. Yeah. And so you better be nice to your mom. That's what my dad said. I mean, it's just plain old good advice, being a good to the woman who brought you into this world. And I'm sure that there's another category for women I, that are... I don't know how well, we got what, off what, into what, this. Wait, what, I, mean, no, 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 what I know, bond? sorry, Brent. Wait, There's wait. no bond in the entire world stronger than that mom-child bond. Yeah. I mean, because how... What other opportunity you get to live inside of a person <laughs> for nine months? <laughs> and you can't they do nourish that with your you, significant they, other. No, there's a, that's <laughs> no, a, mo- that's a even mom close. and kid yeah. thing only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, so... So that was really cool of you to say why don't we do a mother's day episode and then doing that like our collaboration with that was really cool yeah and what we created out of it was so yeah the point was if you haven't listened to heads talking from mother's day go back and listen to it and if you have listened to it go listen to it again might make you feel good yeah i gotta listen to it again (sighs) anyway we're gonna do the business and get you to do the business to the episode so you can check out brent from Curation Records. Yeah, um, so follow us uh, at No Simple Road on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. You know, it, something I keep forgetting every week. And Reddit? No. Twitter? Use the hashtag No Simple Road when you oh. post stuff, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. People, people are doing that, but yeah, it'd be nice to see more. And yeah, yeah, I forget to say that. And it, it just makes more connection between the No Simple Road family. And, yeah. and it helps us see when you post stuff, too, so... You know, that's a good thing. And also, just saying, if you're not into Facebook, you can go to Reddit, r forward slash No Simple Road, and you can interact with the No Simple Road community there. Or you could do it on Facebook with the Facebook group over there, the No Simple Road Family Facebook group. And, and if you're not into any of that, you can simply send us an email. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you, Some people don't like social media at all, so that's a yeah. way to, you know, that's a way to get yeah, us. Yeah, if you want to <clears throat> send us an email, you can... Uh, Go to nosimpleroad.com and go to the contact page there or just info at nosimpleroad.com. And we got a couple actual letters this week. We got um, one from Chris that says... The letter Q? Yeah. Oh. That's it. Uh, the subject is starting a cannabis store in Ohio. Ooh. Uh, hey, friends. Love your show. <clears throat> I'm a longtime deadhead and I'm living in Ohio where cannabis is yet to be legalized. Dang. <laughs> I would like to get ahead of opening a retail store here to sell once it's legalized. I have visited some stores in Colorado while on vacation, and this looks like something that could be both rewarding and profitable. Apple, do you have any suggestions or insights? Any info is appreciated. Thank you. Oh, that's a letter to you, dude. Yeah. Okay. You know, I will respond to that. I I won't go in and on the show. Don't do that here. But (laughs) the only thing I will say is a lot of people think it's going to be easy. 
you gotta be a hard worker. Yeah. It is the hardest I've ever worked in my life. You gotta have good people. But also very you too. rewarding. Yeah, you gotta have a good crew too. Yeah, I'll reach out. And then the <clears throat> here's another one from Kyle. You guys are dope. Oh, thanks, thanks Kyle. Kyle. I just found your podcast today and I love it. (laughs) I'm just a random 18 year old from Minnesota (laughs) that just got into the dead and hearing your stories about the band are very inspiring. Thanks for sharing. (laughs) Awesome, Kyle. Kyle, I want to tell you something, bro. Random 18 year old. Cutest, funnest letter (laughs) that we've gotten in a long time. Kyle, listen to me. I'm I'm, I'm an old man. I'm going to tell you some some truth right now. Kyle, he ain't no old man. He's you are not old man, just yeah. a random person. <laughs> the entire universe is exploding out of your consciousness. Everything that's happening right now is coming from inside your head. We are all in your movie. You are not random. You are awesome. So thanks for writing us, dude. We appreciate <laughs> it. I love yeah. that perspective. You're just like some random dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I like it. It's like, hey, man. Some star floating in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Found, the, found the dead and hooked up with you guys. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. Thanks Here we go. Thanks for listening. Yeah, man. You yeah. guys are right. writing in. And hey, there's a lot of cute Kyles in our life, isn't there? Yeah. I, yeah. Lo- I love that name. I, I have to shout out Optical Illusion <gasps> and Optical. say, bro. In the 150 episodes of No Simple Road, <laughs> you maintain the only interview we've never we never finished, and the only one that we, we all, all fell, fell asleep, asleep <laughs> while in doing the, the interview in the middle of the interview. That was such a strange. We were so baked, and it was like two in the morning. Yeah, and, yeah. I don't know if I've ever been that. Like that was just yeah, you have. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that, was, that, that was a specific time, though. That's yeah. going to be really funny because we're going to have to go back and finish that mm-hmm. when we, we have when we see Kyle again, and yes. to go back and listen to that and then continue it because we got to. Oh yeah, we got to finish it. Do like the original and the follow up. <sighs> yeah, but the, two more things. First things first. Please, you guys, you're at home. You're not doing nothing. Even if you're working from home, you got a lot of spare time right now. Go on Apple Podcast and leave us a five star review. Yeah. Drop a five star. Yeah, we haven't and, had one in and a And type while. a little something something while you're there. Just it'll it'll give you something to do and it'll make you feel good. So it's like a win win. It'll warm our hearts. And your own and because you're doing something for the family. Some random hearts out there that you'll warm. <laughs> you you yeah. could yes. call yourself a heart warmer. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, along with the entire year of music getting canceled. We got canceled with it and we need your help. So go to patreon.com forward slash no simple road and hook up the no simple road family with a buck a month or two bucks a month or five bucks a month and help us continue to keep doing this thing that is holding the fabric of our little no simple road community together. Well, I just want to say thank you to our Patreon because we have been getting a few new Patreon um, Chan donators. So I am currently making. Patrick. Patrick, a fun little item to send to you. So, oh, Patrick. Patrick. Fun item. You got something. I like that. That's Patrick. a generally like a fun item. Yep. Well, because I, it, I sometimes I end it's an up. an umbrella with a speaker. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I have my palette, and then I'm like, okay, I'll start doing that. And then I'll be like, no. So I don't want to say. It's a skateboard with a shark fin. Yeah. No? Okay. It's a fun item. Apple? That's a that's any ideas a, no. about a fun it's item? A no, fun I don't want to. I don't want to guess. Charged item because she doesn't even know yet. It's going to come yeah. to her when she's thinking of Patrick being a Patreon, and it's going to be special and suited it, towards so. him. Okay, yeah. so all right, guys. Yeah. So yeah, and a if turtle you, with a helmet. There we go. <laughs> and if you want to get in touch with the No Simple Road family and leave us a voicemail, you can call our tepid line at. 971-808-1524 that number again is 971-808-1524 and you can call and tell us fun stuff stories you could tell us about weird dreams you could give us a recipe since we've been eating the same things over and over again i made a new recipe tonight that's true that's true and ross james it taught me a new way to make spaghetti sauce and cool. parmesan chicken in jam in the van's food well thing. tonight i made mushroom and spinach ziti with ricotta and mozzarella bake all right 
and so some garlic bread. If you want to tell us about your food, call in. I'll play it on the show. Anyway, we're going to get you to the episode. We love you guys. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for yeah. being part of our family, you guys. We love you guys. Thank you so much for writing in. Yeah. We appreciate it. You really do mean the world to us, man. You have made this whole quarantine thing so much better for all of us. So. Yeah, that's true. And Brent, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on the show. It was an honor and a pleasure, brother. And I'm sure we have a long, long road ahead of us. So Thanks for the awesome vibes, yep. Brent. We'll see you on the other side. Remember, this is going to sound a little weird when it switches over, but just stick with it. Think 70s. Without further ado, the No Simple Road Crew gives you Brent from Curation Records. Take this jumpsuit to put that patch on. Oh. So excited. Yeah, patches are my thing. I'm, I'm so into it. Yes. So I yeah. Oh my and God. Everybody yeah. uses the patches. It's, it's kind of advertising, but it's, it's kind of cool too. Well, if you're putting out dope stuff, advertising is like secondary. You know what I mean? Like it's by default. Somebody's going to be like, dang, that's badass. Where'd you get yeah. that from? Yeah, I'm 56. So we, we, we still say advertising. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dad was like a madman, madman <laughs> type of guy, but it's kind of cool. But, uh, but now it's kind of like promo and swag and stuff. You know? yeah, right. They, they've true. changed, they've changed mm-hmm. the lingo. I'm like advertising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening right now in the world. We're going in between. You know what I mean? Like in between one thing to another. It's advertising, but now it's swag. It's yeah. gonna it's swag, but then it's gonna be we're making the transition. Yeah, we're making That's the transition. Yeah. That's what I like. Cause all the a lot of bands, labels, um brands, anything brand is another word I really don't like, but a lot of <laughs> A lot of guys, you know, who have cool things, you know, whether it's art or music, it's about sharing it, you know, share it with your friends and see how it grows. And there's nothing better to see somebody's sticker on the back of a laptop or a shirt or a post or li- they like it. That to me, that is, it's probably why I'm poor. That is. Like- <laughs> <laughs> we hear you. Yeah. Us too, man. We're not far behind, yeah, man. We're right there. <laughs> That's the reward. <laughs> totally. And it th- it feels really good. Like when you create something and then you see it in the wild, like you weren't expecting it and then you catch it, catch it somewhere. You see it on somebody's water bottle or their fridge or whatever. Yeah. It's in like, the wild. Yes. Oh, yes. Send it unsolicited. Yeah. That an unsolicited. I don't yeah. know. I make a name for it though. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're creating your own Where's Waldo game. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You no, know, your well, own stuff. See what it's about. If your friends, God, oh my God, somebody tells you, oh, I was at my friend's house. Guess what? He listened to this band you were in. It was, you know, or something or, you know, it, it, that's rad. That, I mean, we could talk about it all day, how rad it is. Yeah, well, so, it's recognition. Well, you know Hold on, wait, before we yeah, keep, was, that's I was right. going to say, before we continue, we always do this. We just start talking, right? I away. like it. Well, <laughs> so we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Then we'll have you introduce yourself and tell you what, tell us what you do and why you're joining us today. So, <laughs> I'll start. This is Apple. Thanks for joining us, giving us some of your Sunday afternoon with the puppies. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm scared that I was kind of going to sequester myself away. I'm sorry that I'm ruining the introduction. But the, they, you they, ruining they, the love the dog. If you're, you have listened to the show, this is like whatever's going on. The baby was crying. Like I re- let leave the room. My phone rings. Like <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> it's what it is. It's not a professional operation. The dogs are operation. a part of who we're talking to today. So welcome to the show. This is Mel. And then Aaron, we've talked once before. <laughs> I've never seen you, yeah. so what's happening, brother? How you doing, man? Well, and, I'm Brent, and it's awesome. a pleasure to meet all three of you. So, Brent, what do you do, man? What's what's your? You said you're 56. I'm one of those guys, you know. <laughs> one of those guys. I'm one of those guys that people say you should write a book. Mm-hmm. That's what Neil yeah. would always say. Neil Casal. That's kind of how I found out about No Simple Road. Oh, you guys interviewed wow. him on the tour bus, and of course, I, you know, he and I have been friends, we're friends, and we just, you know, I knew, I met Neil in like 99, I think, early 2000, but we were super close, and I was not only a friend, but a huge fan, so when I yes. saw that he was getting, I read all of his interviews, and, you know, it wasn't like, oh, please mention me, it was, I just wanted to talk to the guy, or hear him talking to other people, I loved him so much, so I tuned in, and that's the first time I heard the three of you guys, and I, 
tuned in a bunch a bunch since then and I love your banter and I love the <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, it, I feel like barking dogs won't won't be an issue. No, but. not oh, a big deal at all. Man. No, it's all about <laughs> what's is, happening now. Well it's part of making yourself welcome. If you came over to the house and you're like, hey man, we I've got my dogs, like we're not gonna be like sorry. Put your dogs in the fucking <laughs> you come room on over in, there. man. This is this is what it, we're bringing you in, bringing you into the course, bringing you into the vibe and seeing what's going on with your vibe, like stuff that we're interested in. And I mean the music that you sent over is so beautiful. Oh my God. Like it just hit me on the right type of day with the right frame of mind with the breeze blowing just right. And I just fell in love. It was, and the package was so delicately and beautifully crafted. Like that's the kind of stuff that you remember. It's not just like a Amazon package with the plastic. <laughs> it, it's yeah. like a special thing coming to you, like a blessing coming to you, like in the music form and then in the um, the thought form and just the cute, like you said, the advertisement, like the proud, like I'm wearing it now because I love it. Yeah. So thank you for doing all that with just that one gesture. We I appreciate that. Well, the, the band Pacific Range, the music, the same thing uh, when I when I first heard them and first saw them, first met them, first heard the record, everything. I got the same feeling, and I was lucky enough to be able to like, whoa, what can I do with this feeling? You know, mm -hmm. I've been helping out, you know, bros and and you know, brothers and sisters who've been playing music for a long time, and I dabbled in, you know, having a label before, but this was the first time I stepped it up and said, man, I feel so good about this. I gotta try to share this feeling. And, you know, just well, thank you. say that yeah. makes me happy because that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, we want it to take off and go places, but it's really about the feeling. And, and you know, we've been stepping up our packaging. Uh, we, we started including some uh, mushroom origami and some, uh, <laughs> um, <Ew. laughs> yeah, because people got stoked on how we were packaging. And I, uh, we just, Kelly and I started thinking about ways to even make it more rad. Well, that's how we got with our sponsor, Shop Tour Bus, yeah. is because Aaron fell in love with how they were sending out t-shirts. So not only were the t-shirts dope, but like you, it comes in this awesome box with like stuff you didn't ask for. And then and a like and a bootleg, and you know, <laughs> dead yeah, stuff you didn't ask for. Yeah, shit yeah. you didn't. And there's something to that, man. Like, and I think that's why we love the music that we love. It's not just music you're getting something more than what you thought you were going to get. When you sit down and listen to these bands, there's so much to it. And it's a lot like getting that package. You, you know, you order a t-shirt and then there's a patch in there and there's a note from Brent and there's the album and a CD, whatever. That's what I love the vinyl. That's, that's how, that's how the music is too. It keeps unfolding itself mm -hmm. like that. And that's, and that's, you keep unfolding the story. I mean, just i'll talk about our first release if you yeah. want to really end yeah. the you unfolded your package and you saw the curation records t-shirt curation records was started our very first project on my whiteboard which is basically in my head was a brand new neil casal solo album what? that's what was supposed to happen i my dear friends matt and kelly they asked about you know funding and partnering in the label and do you know and do you have some things that you that would be worthwhile and and uh i just said neil casal so um, i called neil it was right when crb was starting to announce their hiatus and neil had, there was some confusion there but cats was 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 launching was taking yeah. off so i was also in communicate with gary as manager and you know one of my last texts from neil was curation to the world he said to me you know and i he said oh i can't get my head around being a solo artist i'm like look we got a label we got a name we have funding we have resources it's me i've got all my all my enthusiasm behind this and and you know how much i love you and he's always been after me to produce one of his solo records and i've never been able to do it and so um this was all going to come come to be and it didn't come to be but in the spirit of uh, i'm sorry no it's, it's okay man i'm with on, you man. i'm with it's, you dude 
I just, it's Absolutely. hard right now because I don't want to like toot my horn and I don't want to be sad, but I want to say that he, when what happened last dog is it, it, it put a, it, it wasn't a, it didn't, it didn't crush me. It, it actually f- fueled me to do this. And then I get it. I, I, Wow. So he sparked a lot of people. I was just going to say that, that it was it was very depre- depressing for a moment, but then like I mean, and the way everybody went on and the way cats continued on, just to, you know, I mean, Neil brought brought breath to everybody, and and it and it keeps on. And the, I mean, I didn't know him like you knew him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met twice, and but the times that we sat and talked was extremely profound for me personally yeah. and uh not because of like any fanboy thing but like yeah. just in talking to him and connecting with another human being and what he said to me what you know we were talking about writing and i was like yeah i write lyrics but i never let anybody see them and he was like dude you need to let people see that those lyrics could save somebody's life someday oh man and when that happened it last <laughs> august I, it floored me. It it fucked me up. Yeah. It, it um, and it I felt weird too, like because I didn't know him, but how crushed I was, I yeah. felt like embarrassed. <laughs> that makes any sense? Like, no, it does. And there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of mixed feelings, and but they're not bad. I mean, the fact that you remembered what he said that's important. I remember a few like things that he said to me that really relate to the kind of tragic side and the, and the way things folded out that those things really, those are kind of personal, but the yeah. thing about the things that are shareable about the music, like you're, you're, you, this isn't, you know, you guys aren't a grateful dead podcast, but I will say that it's really like, that's a, it's a great connection. So your listeners would love to know that at Terrapin Crossroads, the very first time, Neil, another one of my, a band that I've been friends with for a long time who were doing well, um, Mapache. Oh, guys, yes. Sam and Neil, we yeah, love these guys. Greatest guys. And um, the very first time Neil saw them, uh, Ben Knight had got us all a show at Terrapin and, uh, and, and Neil was going to play with the Tide, my brother's band, and I play bass in the Tide as well. So, but um, at the sound check, Mapache was playing. Neil walked up to me and said, wow. You, you were right. They're so good. And then two seconds later, he grabbed me like on the butt and said, you're going to, pro- I want you to produce my next album. And so all this stuff unfolded. I met Pacific Range through Mapache. You know, they've, those guys have done so much for me. They always say like, oh, I helped them, but they've done so much for me in a way of inspiration. And that when they started the Grateful Shred, they really, oh my God, I was, you know, I saw the dead once and I might have, you know, I had to get American Beauty, but I didn't get American Beauty till 2001 because my band Beachwood Sparks put out a record and all of a sudden all these people were saying, you got to hear this Grateful Dead record. And, you know, I, I really got m- more beyond like my best of and, and got deeper. But when, when Sam and Clay and Dan Horn uh, and Austin McCutcheon started the Grateful Shred and I saw them live and I listened to the way that Sam and Clay and, and Austin sang the songs, something that was really familiar to me. It really opened me up to like, you know, Go to Heaven is my favorite album now. And, and I go deep with the bootlegs, my friends who give me, I go back and find them all and all the CDRs and all the tapes even. And I've been listening and I've become, you know, super enamored with it and super like, you know, I mean, our first band, Pacific Range, that's the kind of fans that they're kind of like connecting with. Yeah. Because you know? they're a great bar band. They are a great live band. And, you know, they sound a little bit more Almond Brothers than they do Dead, but it's all like, it's all relative. So that world, that moment at Terrapin was really special. And I thought mm-hmm. like, some of the No Simple Road listeners would like to like put yeah. themselves in that moment. They'd rather hear about that than me. Like we, you know, Phil played with us that night. He played with the Tide and I'm the bass player. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> so we did double basses on a song. Oh, shit. Wow. And it was one of our songs. So it was rad. It was a Tide song. And then they wanted to do It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. And I was like, I can't play the bass on this. He's going to want, he's like, 
he told the drummer, do not do a folk rock version of this. We got to do it different. The drummer did a folk rock version of it, but still, we, we, I, I, I couldn't play bass along with it. I just had to listen to him, a guy who's played that song so many times in yeah. so many ways. And that was, that, that's a story. I, I told the story, but it, anyway, I was thinking that the <laughs> listeners- They're both great right stories. <laughs> the story of Neil. And you know, Phil grabbed Mapache right after they finished their sound check and took them on, took them onto his tour bus. Whoa. And it was a connection. Like he heard them singing. It's like hearing the Everly Brothers. Oh my God. Yes, Sunday. yes. And Phil just grabbed, they know a lot about the dead, of course. They, I mean, how they know all the chords and the words to all those songs, but he grabbed them and they were gone for an hour. And I just thought, like, I was tickled pink. I just thought it was amazing. Mm. So Brent, like for you, you're a musician, and you're running a label, how do you balance that? Like, it seems like you would have to want to put your energy into one over the other, no? Yeah, my new album is going to be called Conflict of Interest. Yeah, no <laughs> shit, right? I fucking love yeah. it. Right? I'm pre-ordering. It seems like that would be fucking <laughs> really hard, man. Like, shirt and sticker. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It, you, it is hard because... My music is kind of taking a back seat. Um, Gospel Beach is my main band. I started that band with Neil Casal and, and a guy named Tom Sanford in 2015. But Neil, you know, that's when CRB was really taking off. So and they were hot. Yeah. And he, Neil rejoined us and did uh, our last album, Let It Burn With Us. And that was just, it was our, it's our best album. It's our most successful. And, and that's something else I want to, when you were saying about, you were thinking about the, your feelings about Neil. Yeah. Something that really needs to be said, and, and I, I wish it didn't have to be said, but, you know, I don't have to claim any special friendship with Neil. I know who we were to each other, mm -hmm. and I know what he wanted, and he, Neil promoted himself. He wasn't just uh, going through life with all this stuff happening. He was making these things happen. Yeah. In the music game, you got to do it, you know? So I just don't want anybody to ever think that, you know, anybody's like, you know, kind of trying to garner attention because of associations mm -hmm. with Neil and with what happened. That's always a really tender subject with me. Has that happened? Because I don't, I don't, I guess I don't see that part, you know, I don't. It hasn't happened, but it, yeah, I, I really worry about it. Like, what's I, really, what I love is being able to talk about it like this. So that if there was a misunderstanding and maybe somebody had it out there that happened to listen to this, that they're like, oh, oh all right. That's like, what it was. That's cool. You know, instead of like kind of like to over telling a secret or something. Yeah, you know? no, you're right. No, you're right. you right. know, everybody who Neil touched was, they loved him. And, which, you know, which was everybody. Yeah. Everybody we talk, that's what I love about our community. They're, we haven't talked to anybody over years, even before last August. Everybody yeah. knew Neil. Everybody ran across Neil. They played with Neil. Neil was everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I think everybody can claim a little bit of Neil. Yeah. You know? I don't think anybody should feel ashamed of that. I remember grabbing him two waters, you know, and that's like my thing. It was so special, <laughs> you know, like, cause he was so, yeah, like yeah. It, we just had our special moment too, but like, I, you know, this is great for people. Cause I know a lot of people in the community were hurting and reached out to the show and just, no, it's true. I want, that's, that's, that's the, that's the main goal here is to you not, know, it, we're always celebrating him, but yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's the healing and, and the feeling like I just, we all know him. Like the only thing that I miss, I'm, I miss so much, but the one thing when you were start talking about your moment with them, it's like, I always want to pull him in and closer next time and yeah. smell him and like, God, I, I was yeah. uh, we were so close, but I wanted to be closer now that he's, now that he can't be. And I want people to, hear his solo music and I want people to know that CRB ran its course naturally and and these are the things that I'm like alluding to with like you know he's not around to say like oh would he have posted that yeah would he have, said that? Would, he have would he have lent his name to that but the answer to all those things is yes because the one thing Neil never said was no unless it was something selfish for him like he didn't he was he needed some he needed money isn't the right word he he was wondering financially what he was going to do. He's like, I'm out of a job. And I'm like, I have a label. Tell me your bank information right now and I'll put the <laughs> money into the account. 
Yeah. Oh, go ahead, don't do that. I'm like, oh, you know, it's like, I'm not asking for anything in return, just that you make a record, you know? And, and, um, and I really love that moment. I was working at a design firm and I was, should have been working, but I was actually sitting there talking to Neil and texting and I was like telling him and I, and he sent me a message back. No, I, I don't, it wasn't like the exact words, but I think n knowing that that was there for him really helped him. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. Well, on. yeah. Having all of us go Hell through that, yeah. man. Like if you're, floating in the breeze with your putting your creativity out there and you don't know where the next thing is going to come knowing that there's a safety net out there for you gives you a freedom to continue to create yeah it, it's just it, the yeah, way it is it doesn't man. leave you bound up yeah you you're know? not you're you, it gives you space in your head and that's that's really important for everybody that is creative to have that space because if you're worried about paying the electric bill or where your next meal is going to come from there could be a great song that's in that that could be taking up that space in there yeah and the music business is hard because there are come you know I, I i had some of the kind of the worst experiences of my life in um signed to a big label who gave a lot of money for you to have that freedom but the creativity that we the creativity that that freedom didn't always, you know, didn't always yield the best work. Right. So it's kind of got to be an honest thing. Hold on. Let me close this door. Yeah. Yeah. My neighbors are working on their house on Sundays. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess every day is Sunday. Right now yeah, it is. is. <laughs> but that, that feeling that, 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 um, that, that, that space, it has to come from the right place. I, I just know because I've been through it. This is what like musicians who get to like work with me, they're lucky because I have all this experience. I've had some successes, but I've had a ton of failures. I hate to say it. And I've learned from those. I haven't been able to apply them always to myself, but I can really help other people a lot. And I, and um, one of the thing is like when somebody writes you a check, it's not a magical so it doesn't solve your problems magically especially if you're an artist or a writer or whatever it's you you know you need that balance yeah. um but it when it's coming from a friend or a source or somebody that you really trust oh my gosh there's like mm. that's, that's way to well, and it's belief too it's belief in you like that's the main thing it's yes like, it like knowing somebody is like look man my money's on you like that is the it, that's what makes your heart feel like you can create because you're talking about up here in your head about bills well then how about like in your heart like that just kind of gets soothed by like wow I, i'll tell you what though like d during this whole covid thing that's going on i've yeah. really had a a different <clears throat> outlook on money money seems really strange right now to me and it's like so strange right and and the idea of it even seems weird anymore and so, like, you're talking about a friend writing you a check. That's like me giving you my intention. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, here, here's my belief and in my intention in yeah. the form of ones and zeros in a computer so that you can pull out of yourself what you want to create. And that's huge. If it, and like you said, if it's coming from outside your, your circle, it is different because there's not that belief attached to it so that that that's huge like if apple was to come to me and say or you and say you know what i believe in no simple road and i'm going to give you guys fifty thousand dollars so that you can you don't have to work this year so you could do the show or whatever right yeah that would be way different than if bank of america did that for me okay. yeah it would it would have a completely different vibe to it yeah it's true yeah. Unless, and, of course, one of your killer bros scored a job at B of A. That's yeah, true. So like, no, no, no. I've, I've infiltrated. I've got my hands on the stash, and I'm going to make – see, that's what the, the label – like, Curation Records is, like, one of my favorite labels ever is called Creation Records from England. They were around in the late 80s and most of the 90s. It was um, Alan McGee's label from Scotland. The biggest group that I think he signed was Oasis, but the bands like My Bloody Valentine and – and oh, Primal wow. Scream and Teenage awesome. Fan Club and so many of the early bands that he did, just so great. So I love that label, but I love David Geffen, David Geffen, Asylum Records, 
most of my records, if you look at them, I'm, most of them are, they're all used copies, but like all, what I love, that kind of Southern California rock, it's on Asylum. So, and that was an artist driven label by a guy that wasn't an artist, but he really, really seemed to have an insight into what it, what an artist needs to create. Right. And, and, and I tried to merge the, the two ideas um, of those two labels together for curation because I just didn't want to say, oh, I just want to make a label and make all my friends, you know, famous and sell a lot of records and buy a house or whatever. It's like, it, it was, it's so much more than that. It's like deeper and deeper. And, and, and it comes from the person who believed in me, like uh, my partner in the label, he's got like his businesses are, you know, giant, what is a city without its music? The legacy of the New York Philharmonic is incredible. Nearly two centuries of history. That's a lot of music and a lot of stories. I was sitting on stage for the very first time thinking, I can't quite believe this is happening. Join me, Jamie Bernstein, as we explore the history of the New York Philharmonic. It's the NY Phil story made in New York, a podcast about a city, its people, and their orchestra. Listen wherever you get podcasts. Cannabis grows in, uh, in Colorado, you know, growing the organic CBD uh, cannabis. And, and um, that's my jam. Heck yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, okay, record label is kind of the same thing, you know, it's a good place to invest. <laughs> you know, you like me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, you know, I've just been like really lucky to have somebody who I trust have that belief in me. And then I'm trying to pass it on to like, Okay, so Pacific Range, I came to those guys and I was like, you know, saw them. At, I think it was Shred Fest. Right. Mm. Those guys do. And I had seen them before and I loved them. And, and but anyway, they're just blowing me away every time. And, and, you know, I go another, somebody I go farther back than Neil uh, is Dan Horn. Oh, I go, wow. Dan and I <laughs> met in like the weird days before, like when it would be like, uh, I brought him into my band Beachwood Sparks, but um, he was actually recording um, like a rock record I was trying to make um, in, in 2004 or five. But, um, well, actually, I guess I knew Neil before that, but, but um, Dan had recorded the Pacific Range album. So it was like a no brainer. It's like, these are all my friends, you know, Mapache <laughs> singing on it. Dan's recorded it. I already, you know, everything just lined up perfect. And I just kind of just said the same thing. I was like, Hey, I have some resources. Can I, you know, can I help you? And they were, they were into it. And it's so far, it's really working out really well. It's, it's a, it's a success in, in the fact that we're all happy and the people that hear it, love it. Yep. And, and I the artwork too. Oh, that's incredible. So oh, who, who, yeah, who's the artwork from? This is a guy, Brian Blomerth, and he is, I actually had seen some of his artworks. He did a Riley Walker album, and I thought that was an amazing cover. And um, actually the band hooked up a deal with them before they signed to the label, hooked up a deal with Brian. So, you know, w when a band's like independently doing a record, they go to an artist and say, hey, can you do our cover? And they're like, yeah it's this much money then they say they're signed to a label and like oh yeah now it's this much money yeah, no. <laughs> you know, it doubles. i'm like wait i'm not a label i'm just a guy with four dogs <laughs> let's not go crazy here but no it's uh yeah the cover art's great the, the recording the, is great it's like it the sounds like la feels right yeah. now. yes it does sound and feel like la did did he do that video as well the were there in no the no that was a french guy that was the only non-california um, everything is, I try to make it made in California. That's another curation thing. But my friend Cyril, um, I saw a video on Instagram from a friend of Neil's. This is another connection. It's like, you know, when Neil passed, everybody reached out to each other and somebody had reached out to me and said, I, I didn't know, don't know you, but I, I was friends with Neil. He sang on my record once, or I knew him, check out my music. And I saw a video, um, that Cyril did for, for her and I asked if he could do one for Pacific Range and he nailed that. So fucking cool, man. That was the first, I think that was like one of the first exposures I had to them. And I was like, I want to know more when I saw yeah. them. Like instantly. Well, it's a little oh. bit silly. That They were a little worried that it was too like, you know, like uh, not silly, but just n not like cool, you know? I think they Whip wanted to do something like- Fucking fun. 
And I know, but that was like the first thing of me having to say, guys, trust me, it's fun. People that aren't mm-hmm. you, they're not going to say, oh, these guys are a bunch of chumps. They're just going to be like, that's fun, mm-hmm. you know? And that's going to be something that's going to be around for a long time because like my, my, my kind of plan with this whole label isn't just to like, oh, okay, let's do the pre-sell and then, you know, this blog is going to do the, the premiere of the video and then, then the record's done. You know, and it's all going to be done within a week. That's so and, you know, true. I, I always wondered about that. What happens to ongoing, pro, like promoting it? Like I, you I hear guess, two songs and then you're done. Yeah. It, it's, it's just because you have to like, not you don't have to, but my plan is to really stretch it out and just to not like, it doesn't matter if everybody sees it at once. If they see it at some point, then I'm going to be happy. And, and like, you know, shoot, man, those guys... Another person that your listeners might know is Dave Schools. And I've, they've yeah. already been in the studio with Dave for a whole nother record, like a, 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 like a 12 inch that we were going to do. You know how back in the, in the, in the, in the, well, you guys. I, I'm 48. I'm Apple's 50. 50. <laughs> Mel's, I'm 42. Mel's 42. Okay. Before your guys are done, before, before your time, <laughs> no, and the, you, you, you know, you collect records, so you know that there's a, yeah. a, a 12-inch is something that's really gone by the wayside, like yeah. the extended 12-inch. So when I, when, 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 I, when I got with Pacific Range and they had their album done, I said, why don't we make like an extended, like, you know, just go in the studio and play a 30-minute song. Do what you do live, but we'll do it in the studio. Right. And we'll do it on a 45 RPM 12-inch, so it'll sound really fat with the super fat grooves and 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 um they went in the studio with dave schools and and a really cool engineer who was from uh tri you know is that is that right yeah tri's right yeah um and so it was all they were up in oakland too so it was all very dead infused and they just like rocked it so that's something that's coming you know something that's like on deck and it's i just want it to be like it's i don't want like the album to be old news or the band to be old. oh remember them they came out and and uh, you know, Rolling Stone premiered their video, and and you know they had they got they got sixty they got six six hundred and fifty likes or whatever. It's like that's Two thumbs like, up in one heart. Yeah, I, I've been through Twitter followers, Spotify listeners, playlists. I've been through um, how many people can you draw to your show? You know, I've just I'm I've just been around, so I just know that all those things don't matter because I wouldn't still be around today if they did because I've never had any of those but I'm still around and still helping people. Wow. So, and people are still coming to me all the time. Can you help me? And I'm like, well, how can I help you? <laughs> so it's like, you're really like just innovating it on based on what you've seen through your experiences and doing something rad that it's not like, you know, one and done kind of a thing. Yeah. It's keeping it going and keeping the, like, they're very relevant. That's another thing that I remember about it. I felt like it was just so appropriate for what's going on right now. And like the feeling that it mustered was like a salve for that, for this time yeah, right now. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I do it every morning. I, and I've had the record digitally for, for a, a year. And, and the only thing that's moved it off my turntable was I finally got the new Mapache record. And, oh. <laughs> And now I switch it, but but no, you're right. And and those, the lyrics and the sound. The, another thing that's really going to that really makes them relevant is when this is over, and the doors get opened up. They are an incredible live band. Actually, I'm kind of glad that their the Pacific Range album came out the way it's coming out. I don't like what's going on, and nobody in their right mind would. But <laughs> If you want to think of a silver lining, now everybody can really get familiar with the songs and then they can see the band live. If you went the opposite way with Pacific Range, their album is like song oriented, like American Beauty meets like Eat a Peach maybe, but without the live side. But if you saw them live and then you got their record, you'd be like, oh, oh, they, this is a little more laid back. This is a little more soothing. But now that the record is out there and those people have the songs, it's like the way the dead did it. They hear the records and then they go see them live and hear what the band does with it. Because the band can raise the vibrations if you're in a, I've seen them in sports bars. I've seen them in a patio. I've seen them in concerts. I saw them open for circles around the sun. I saw them everywhere you could possibly see them. They always deliver. And that is not like a like a selling point. Like, hey, buy this record. This is just like oh. that. That's fucking hard when you're a band. That is fucking hard. Yeah, to put it out 
always <laughs> deliver, man. Yeah. The good ones usually suck every other well, time. Even, even Jerry said that. Oh, he yeah. was like, man, they can't all be zingers. Fucking. Well. <laughs> but you know that you brought up something that's unique to the community that we're a part of, man. And that whole thing of like the one and done or the one hit wonder, I don't really see that anymore with this scene. It These bands come and people feel it and then they attach to that feeling and they attach to the band. And once you attach, it's it was like that with Circles Around the Sun and CRB. I heard it, I attached to the sound, then I wanted to see the thing grow. I wanted to watch it happen. Just like if you plant a seed, you want to see the plant come up and get the fruit from it. That's how I felt with CRB, with Circles, and with these guys. Like, I want to see what happens. So I'm going to stay engaged with it through the lifespan of it. Yeah, well, the industry outside of, like, the community um, isn't really, that's not what they're after. They want the big buck, and they want it yeah. fast, and they want it soon. It's like, you know, uh, I, w- I'm, I have a really good friend who is the head of a r at Rhino Records and uh, Jason Jones, and I got to go down there, and I got to meet Mark Pincus. So I got to see a band that I absolutely admire everything about, like, the dead and see where, who's, who's handling, how they're doing it, and get like advice from these guys. And um, that was just, and I'm still in touch with them, and it's, it's been really, really incredibly helpful because like, you know, that's, they're, that's a pretty large indie world. It's all in the Warners thing now, you know what I mean? But Rhino, you know, came up doing all these rad compilations and the fact that the dead ended up on Rhino records and that's who has their catalog and has the st- that's like perfect. So right. I've been trying to take a lot of cues in a very small way. And they're all about reissues and things, you know, like, Oh, the Stooges new, uh, you know, comprehensive reissue of Funhouse with the original tapes and all that that's that's well beyond some guy who's got it or girl just whoever has a label and they're trying to like hear me now and get all the likes on Spotify and all the all the you know what I mean it's like yeah. that's and they're all actually if I think most most people in the industry are going to turn to like what I call like the corporate hippie ideal you know what I mean? They're going to see that this is the only place making, generating revenue right? Um, for rock and roll. But you know, there's something underneath all of this that we have to mention. It's like, there's magic in this music. All of it. Oh, without the music, there's, there's nothing. There's, there's magic that lives in this music. And so I think without the business side of it, yeah. There's still life in it because of that magic. That magic turns people on. It changes people's outlook. It alters our realities. It and you can't fake it. It creates relationships. It, so you think that instead of somebody looking at it saying that people are because I do get a little cynical and I have to watch myself because I would never like change my music to like we'll say to fit into any kind of like oh that's popular now so i'm going to ch- i not my no and i would never sign a band because of that it has to be there has to be a real connection right. and i chris robinson who was another really good friend and a big supporter of of mine and uh I I heard him on Howard Stern, one of my favorite shows, and he was really going off on people who were sucking on the teat of the dead <laughs> and that community and i started thinking about how many people that I know that are involved in the community and not, not taking advantage. That's what they love. And that's what they've always loved. Yeah. I forgot that, you know, you guys follow a skateboarding world much? No, not anymore. I used to just passed away. Jeff Grosso, he skated for Santa Cruz. I know who he is. Yeah. He did those love letters to skateboarding for vans on YouTube. It was a really popular, show and he just dissected skateboarding great great guy incredible i he passed away recently but i was actually in a crazy backyard inland empire like kind of van halen punk band with him for (laughs) one one or two shows back in the 80s right um and the other singer in that band was this guy pete corona and the band was called the insulters well 
the guys who were putting on his backyard party was Chris Mitrovich, who does Skull and Roses. Yeah. So, and, and Pete Corona now has a band, The Alligators. Right. They're the pig pen cover band. Right. So, and these are guys I've known since 1987. And, and they used to sing the dead to me all the time. And I'd be like, yeah, 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 I, I, dig, I dig it. I'd be like, I it, man. <laughs> check out the water boys. You know, I would like try to get them to listen to some eighties band I was listening to. But, um, butthole surfers. <laughs> yeah. But I started thinking about all these people that are really connected in, in the community. Like I think that, that you're, and, uh, talking about. And, and it's, it's, it's great. I could, I could probably connect so many dots. Yeah. And, and I never even like think to reach out to those people. I just like was listening to your podcast about you had uh, Steve Parrish on. Right. And you're talking about Skull and Roses coming up. This is before COVID. So somebody said there was too many bands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably him. Or her. It was. Yeah, I think I know who it was. But anyway, I thought that was amazing because I, I love those. Uh, I never, I haven't been up to that festival, but I, I can't believe that I know that I'm so close with the guy who, you know, that I've known him for years, you know? Yeah. Well, and just started peeling back the layers and, and you can see. You know, I think Chris did a lot. I think CR and Neil did a lot to bring in a lot of um, like rock and rollers into that scene. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it turned a lot of people on. Sure. Man. The, the Chris Robinson Brotherhood turned a lot of people on. And, you know, the, the thing that I see now, and you mentioned it at the beginning, like this isn't a Grateful Dead podcast. It started I, out I, that it way. It started as that. Yeah. And I thought of myself as a deadhead for a really long time and I realized that that's not the case that I'm a music lover I love music it doesn't matter if it's the dead it's music is the thing that turns me on and I see the dead in the world that we're in as like a trunk of the tree you know what I mean there's all these bands that have come out of that thing if doing two sets um playing extended jams that is a, a thing that they brought to life and so now there's all these bands that are doing that thing building their own sound system yeah it's it's so it's not i don't think it's creating, your own, bad, creating your own everything and not not just relying on somebody else to make totally. your backstage passes to make your to book your venues to do whatever it is and and <clears throat> i would encourage so many people out there I mean, the one thing that's hard to do is book yourself. That's really, really hard. Yeah. But the yeah. easiest thing to do is to be your own record label. But if you can get your own manager and your own, your own um, booking, you, another booking agent and help some, get somebody to help promote you and a few other things, those things are hard to do yourself. But the easiest thing to do yourself is to be your own record label. It doesn't take a lot. Um, it, it doesn't mean that you don't need other people to help you, but um, <clears throat> like, just think about the dead struggles on Warner Brothers, you right. know? And, and when, when the dust settled, they, they put all the blame on themselves. They were blaming, you know, the fuck you text and, or the facts and or whatever. Right. Every, they were blaming the record company and the studios and the producers for a long time. But I think when the dust settled, they realized that- It's on us. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do is go in the studio and record. So it's like, um, I don't know. Did they ever start Grateful Dead Records? I mean, what was their label that they, that's the, I don't know enough about them. No, you should ask every guest you have on the show, like five Grateful Dead questions. And <laughs> that's <laughs> one of them. What label? You no, know, I think it ended up being Round Records is what it ended up being at the end of the day. I'm sure somebody's going to go. Yeah, no, you're yeah. wrong. It's <laughs> fucking Warner Brothers, whatever. I mean, I, I saw the dead at the Coliseum in 1991, one of the most notorious worst shows ever. And every people that I tell that to, they're just like, Oh dude, you totally missed out. You know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it wasn't, it was hard. There was a big fight between the cops and the, and the, and the, and the head. And yeah. the band wasn't, very i guess it was it almost i don't know if it was in june or is in april i know it was really hot um <laughs> <laughs> so tell me brent uh, curation records like the name curation 
Yeah. What's the what's the thought behind it? Why that is because I am supposed to be the one. It's going to live or die about by the, the way I curate it, the way I find mm-hmm. the bands, the way I present the bands, the way you know, um, the way I work with everybody uh, who's promoting it. Um, everybody who's helping me with the label it's just it's it's not just about my word and and what i say and the what what my taste and how i curate it it's about like you kind of come on board with with what i say and then you bring what you can and then we're just going to take and 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 it's and and just to answer the question more simply it the main goal was just to curate this local scene here on the northeast side of los angeles i just really wanted to put out neil's record and i really wanted to do mapache's records they they signed by the time i was getting my my resources together they they signed to a bigger label which is amazing and they're doing great and i'm really really happy for them i don't think that curation is like curation is probably like a stop on the way to somewhere bigger um unless we really can build it into something good but but it's really, it was for Neil, it was for Mapache, it was for Beachwood Sparks, my other band, to get back together and make a new studio album. And I really wanted a place for Gospel Beach to um, make make an album because those records have been on another label. So I don't have the control of the way they're presented. And right. and so, so um, that, that, you know, I think, I think the, and I told you Creation Records was a big, big inspiration. Mm-hmm. So curation, I was in a, I was in um, what co- uh, Costco, and I saw a big bunch of artichokes, and it said curation foods, and I was like, boom, I'll take there that. <laughs> <laughs> what heck, yeah? What is it about California, man? What is it about the, the earth it's there the that vibe, creates man. that sound? What the fuck, man? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, when you get to the border, they give you the Jackson Brown album. Yeah, <laughs> and a joint, right. and, and, <laughs> and keep and driving. Just, and they say, if you can make a living on this, then you can. Yeah. No, it's you know what the thing is. It is incredible. Uh, it is so California. I moved here from the Gulf Coast of Florida in 1987, and man, I even love. I used to, it used to be a lot better. I even love Hollywood. You know, that was something that the like L.A. It was that's something that my partners in the label and I talked about. We really wanted to, we didn't want to be, you know, it's not just about the California sound. It's about the California way of doing things. You know, you can get some things done and hustle some things. If you do it right, you're not like, you know, there's a, there's a difference between like the Donnie Marie show and the Glenn Campbell show or the, or the Johnny Cash show. You know, they both had like Friday night television programs and one was really cool and one was kind of cheesy. They were both entertaining, but there's a way to do this. These record, like I ended up on Geffen Records in the 80s and that was a bad experience. We had a band called Shadowland and me and my brother and uh, we had a lot of money put into us. And um, and we were, they were like, oh, you guys are the new Buffalo Springfield. They saw us playing birds covers in a, in a, in a local club called Club Lingerie and Geffen signed us. and. And at the same time, David Geffen was going to restart Asylum Records, which is, a, you know, my dream labels, like all the bands that I just, all the, you know, it's just, that was just a moment in time in that, for the right. California sound, you know, from Joni to Jackson to, to everything. And uh, they said, David Geffen's going to restart the label called Asylum Records. Do you want to be on it? And we said, yes. And then they said, oh, no, we couldn't get the rights. They're going to call it DGC Records. And we said, no, we'll stick on Geffen. And anyway, our record flopped. We didn't listen. You know, Nirvana made it huge and, and put, the, put Geffen, you know, I guess Guns N' Roses and Nirvana. We were kind of in between the two. So I, 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 I just got a real glimpse of what L.A. can do to you the right. wrong way. It's yeah. not all about feeding you money and renting you cars and renting you a house and saying you guys are going to be the next thing. You know, it, it actually, we were a good band. We were great musicians and not, you know, I mean, we were a great, 
uh, we had to camp. <laughs> well, yeah, we were shitty musicians, but we were, we had, we really had heart. We really did. We, we were cool. I thought we were really yeah. cool. We came from Florida and it was that, it was that, it was that belief that, that a label like that put in us that almost kind of fucked us up. Oh, you know, yeah. kind of make it seem like, yeah, maybe we are fucking cool. You know, and like we're going to work every day at the at the rehearsal studio, like we're going to a job. Really fucking stupid, man. But but there goes the magic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that magic. you know what? Yeah. That's the shit, though. Like you, you said earlier, you were like, I've done a lot of things right, and I've made a lot of mistakes, and I've learned a lot of shit. We don't learn from the stuff we did right. We learn from the shit we fucked up. The times That's that why I'm the wisest man on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pacific Range, they, I, I can see their eyes rolling in their head when I have a meeting with them and I say, oh, don't do that. I did this and that. But I have all these references. And when I try to like give them that advice, it's, I will say how the Geffen thing ended, though, it's dead related. Oh, shit. They put us all on right. tour with the Meat Puppets. At the time, they were on SST Records. Right. They weren't on the major label yet. So we had a bigger tour bus and we were opening for them and we were some band on Geffen and they were traveling with their weed and their bong in a trailer and, and they had this killer kind of punk community dead following. I remember following you. they were awesome back in the day. And they're mu- incredible. Like their, their music live sounded nothing like on their records. Right. Everything jammed and it was faster and it was cool. Well, we saw them and we're like, oh fuck, we're, we're, we're totally doing this wrong. You know, we, we think we're gonna be, you know, something else. You know what I mean? We, we were just knew that we were doing it wrong. So we came back, we started a band called Further, you know, we took the name off the front of the bus and we started our own label. And, and from there, I ended up on Sub Pop Records with Beachwood Sparks, which is a decent label. And I learned a yeah. lot more lessons, but in the good kind of lessons. Yeah. And I'm still friends with them today, and they, they, they still help with the label, but uh, not not with the label, but they still help me in as you know, anything I need. But um, and that that experience, those experiences that I got, I I can give to the bands that I'm helping out now and stuff, and even like the moves that we make as a label. You know, Sub Pop made it because they were cool. They weren't just some chump label saying, "Oh, buy everything." And and you oh, know, that was from the heart. Sub Pop was from the heart. Yeah, and that's what we're. That's what we are. It's like. The heart is, it's like, it's not, even, it's beyond from the heart now. It's from like, it's from like, uh, honestly, whatever's left of me is in this label. That's fucking beautiful. I've been through so much with people who know. Even I've, all these bands that you've been in, I'm like, <laughs> damn. She's got a list over here. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have done some stuff. If you ask me a list of the bands I've opened for, you, it would, your jaw would drop. And then you would also, no, when you help when your other friends are complaining that they didn't get the opening for some band you tell them that's not a fucking way to make it because i've opened for every single person from you know i've opened from every band from duran duran to uh you know i gotta think of somebody cool like crb okay and yeah. it doesn't matter you only who you are you know like the Black Crows, that's how I met Chris. Bl- the Black Crows, uh, Chris was a big fan of the first Beach with Sparks album. He showed up at the Mercury Lounge in New York City at one of our shows, and we were pretty stoked because it was sold out. Chris comes walking in with, uh, with Kate at the time. He was married to Kate Hudson. Came down to the dressing room. We're sitting there staring at him like, oh my God, this guy is a guy from the Black Crows in our dressing room. Pulls out the full-on Cheech and chong size joint. Big fucking. Yeah. <laughs> we all smoke because that's I still smoked a lot back then, but you know after the show we're like come back hey man was that was all right I was like yeah thanks for ruining the show we were fucking floored man your pants <laughs> yes like <laughs> I just remember like I, I felt okay I got on the stage and looked at it was our first sellout in New York we sold out the Mercury Lounge pretty felt pretty good but yeah. I was putting my bass on and the drummer tapped me and he's like hey nice little crowd out there and the way he said it made, and I was so stoned I just felt like fuck I don't even want to be here <laughs> I was just like I, was I hide inside my bass cabinet for the show yeah no I've been there you. it was like Chris what was in that stuff 
And I remember him just like laughing and then he invited us over to his his loft in, in Soho and got us stoned again. And then I was stoned in New York. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, I was stoned and then he took us on tour and I was like, oh, and, you know, here's a funny story that, so Pacific Range was playing with um, Howlin' Rain and Gospel Beach up at the chapel and CR was DJing and CR and Camille were going to DJ. And uh, they started, Pacific Range started playing and, and Chris just like, loves him. He's like, it's a Grateful Dead. That's his quote. I want to use that quote, but he'll kill me. I just want to put in quotes, it's the Grateful Dead. He Chris Robinson. His, yeah, he put his hands and he went, it's the Grateful Dead. Well, he said he wanted to talk to the guys. I said, guys, do not, they all smoke and they all, I Don't mean. smoke with them before the show. <laughs> I just said, be careful. And they, and, they, they, and they said, don't worry, somebody already told us. Oh, oh shit. shit. Hey, that's one of those lessons that you learn the hard way. <laughs> That was the goddamn. That was one of the best. I uh, can't wait to get back to live music because my band played that night. We had to play after Pacific Range, and it was hard. And we we I think we did good. Chris really liked it, and and I remember uh, Charlie Sexton was there, and he grabbed me and said he liked the show. And but Pacific Range was on fire that night. A soul, like a packed chapel in San Francisco. They, most people never even heard their name and they just blew everybody away. And it was one, of, it was like when I saw Nirvana open for Dinosaur Jr. before Nevermind was out. Oh I was just God. like, whoa, yeah. I know every one of these songs right now on my way to the car. And I was, I'm, I'm like probably oh, number one Dinosaur Jr. fan oh. on my block. You got a couple <laughs> Dinosaur Jr. Yeah. fans here too. God. But I was like, uh oh. Mm -hmm. I, my my legs started hurting during like thumb you know what i mean it was like i was like okay guys get it over with you know because because it was so good but that's what pacific range that night with um that chris dj that was they were so incredible i can't wait for this to be over for people to see them well, how yeah. you and i talked about it a little bit when we talked on the phone the other day like there was a lot getting ready to happen before everything got shut down how do you think this like what do you see happening do you do you see live music coming back soon? What yeah, I'm I'm the eternal optimist. I'm I'm the like everybody. Uh, yeah, I do. And you know, I already got a text from you know Folk Yeah, Brit, one of the the just talk about somebody that hold holds the West Coast together. He's like, let's do three nights residency with Pacific Range at the chapel special low ticket price get everybody stoked about coming around live music again i mean i don't know if i should say this but that's just like to me that's happening well this will be out in, in probably two three weeks so even though hui chica their, their their festival that in sonoma that they were going to play got moved to october and um hypnic another one that we're all going to play got moved to this uh september i think music for small venues are going to come back soon and yeah. And, and I'm not saying this, this isn't like anybody just shut the fuck up because I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not. <laughs> We're allowed to have opinions, yeah. shit. This is my opinion. My opinion yeah. is going to be okay. The damage is done. It's, and I'm sad about the damage. I just finished a tour. I went to, Gospel Beach went to Spain, England, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, and all the train stations and airplanes and airports and hotels and restaurants and clubs that close contact that we have we you know we play anywhere from 100 people to 500 a night in those cities right. and everybody want, wants to hang out and sign their record and 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 that was february 11th all the way to march 2nd and then we came yeah. back and i was like oh fuck we are fucked and johnny our keyboard player who's also the producer in gospel beach he has a compromised immune system and diabetes. And I was like, I'm so fucking frightened right now. And then I turned off the news and I started just texting with him. And he's like, I'm fine, hey, we're doing this. And then I talked to everybody involved in that tour. I made it a point to reach out to every promoter, every fan that we talked to on Instagram. Hey, are you guys okay? I just, you know, that was gnarly. I'm so, we knew about it, but nobody told us to stay home. There was like warnings, but it wasn't like, don't go like 
Yeah, no one knew how severe it was. There was no way to or tell. Or not severe. Yeah. Or anything. Yeah. So I'm just starting to like think that. Okay, we we I always, we 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 lived through it. Not everybody lived through it, but not everybody lives anyway. But you know, damage is done. Let us let us let them play. Let, I don't even want to go on tour. I don't care if I play another show. I just know that Pacific Range, a band that I've been in before, where you work so hard, and these guys, they're not some like, hey, let's start this band. They're like in it. In it. It's really right. it's they're the- hungry, but they it's because they love it. And all the work they play chicken coops and every outhouse and townhouse and farmhouse and set up on the beach. I'm serious. These guys, the last tour they went on, I'd be like, send me pictures and they'd be set up on a roof at a winery oh, wow. or in a park. They play tw- three times a day sometimes. And, wow. and they, and what do you, and bring their own PA on tour like the Grateful Dead, wow. but stick it in a little van. So they were already with the album, and my my like help behind them and all the hard work they've been doing. Sorry if I'm rambling, but this is oh, like- well, I'm enjoying the shit out of it. You're making me fall in yeah. love with them. That's so They cute. were so ready to like explode. Like I just like, like they were actually, like I could see it in their eyes. Wow. And then when this happened, my heart broke for them. It just yeah. broke for them. And it wasn't about the record sales or the money or any, it was just like, they but were going to experience what it means to to work at something you love and to have it you know have it come true it was all they had already got the like you know oh this guy thinks you're great this girl loves your songs this they've already got those accolades and they don't care they want to reach the people they want to get to your town and you guys come to the show yeah right and hang out yeah, and, yeah. And, and 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 they just like they want that part where the where the where the where they extend their one of their songs coming after you and it when it goes back into the song and every woo the yeah. crowd goes crazy and they don't even know the fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, man, I I fucking can't wait. I know, I'm excited. What's the first show, you're what 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 if you had a dream band to see when you when you uh, got when this is over, what would it be? For me, for me, well, for me, I'll throw it out there. I think you'll all agree because I was looking so forward to it and the new album, Cats. We were going to be going and seeing Cats. They were heading back up here, and that got that that band just get, gets it so so good. My mm. dream, dream, dream is to see Radiohead again to, for yeah. them to come back <laughs> through. Yeah. I mean, I know it's way out there, but that well, you, that, you love what you love. You got yeah, love man. I I gotta say. I got to agree with Apple. Radiohead. Or, no, Cats. Uh, cats. Like yeah. Circles around the sun. That's what we're really looking forward to. Well, I love, okay, I got so many Cats stories. I'll tell you a couple mm-hmm. of them. One of them was when Pacific Range got the opening for Cats at Zebulon. You know, I know the owners of Zebulon. I know Dan. Neil was still around when the show was booked. And I said, oh, shit, if I can get Pacific Range on this show, it'd be rad. So I made some calls. I got some like, yeah, we love those guys. And, but hold on, there's some corporate interests that want to get their bands on here. But I said, come on, man. And I pushed a little bit, but it's B-Rad. They, I have to like, that's what I do. You know what I mean? It's like, I never say, hey, but I helped you. you know, but I said at that time, I think I, was, I had to get them on the show because my whole point wasn't, I knew they were going to blow the crowd away, but I wanted Neil to see them uh-huh. and say, is this your band? These guys? You know what I mean? Because I don't know how much he, he, he was familiar with them, but I don't know if he actually got to actually see them play because right. every time they were always like on a different stage or whatever. So I'm like, I got a little surprise for you. So anyway, the show, things went down like they did and the show did happen and the guys did great. The guys were amazing. And, and uh, you know, shoot, Dan produced the album. So of course he wants to help. But, you know, Dan is like, that's the thing about Circles, you know, he got left a really they built that into something and then he he now he's like you can't just walk away from something like that no 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 you shouldn't have to no that's a freight train no the total freight i remember them telling me that in the kind of like i don't i'll just say the jam scene world yeah they had reached a tier 
and it was like they couldn't believe it. They were they were they were happy. They were so happy. They weren't like hey, we're you know we're great. They were like whoa, we worked hard. We did this from the heart. It was it was a fluke. It wasn't a band like hey, we're gonna be you know we're not like some prefab band. They just made their stuff for fairly well, and then it you know, got to play one show. It was only gonna be one show. Then it turned into yes. like have something and. Yeah. The guys couldn't be cooler. I mean, yeah. Adam, come oh. on, and Mark, <laughs> sweethearts, oh man. Those are that's just the, brothers. Those I feel like um, Cats is if we had like there's a couple bands that would be this, but like that they just have such a deep place in the heart of the, our show. Like yeah. having all of them on the show and just seeing them when we did. And I remember when we. Um, Eric, we didn't know it was Eric Krasno that was going to be um, filling in. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I love Eric. I love him. I love what he does. I love his f- funky style. But I was bummed just because Neil wasn't there. That's yeah. all. It had nothing to do with anybody else. And I kind of, you know, I was like, okay, I'll like it. But, you know, kind of not giving Eric a chance, just whatever. And then I don't know what happened, but and then like, the drugs kicked in. Well, yeah, may, <laughs> maybe the drugs kicked in, but you know what? Like it after jammed. two songs, Eric, I don't know. Th- he he created outer space and took us with him, yeah. and made me love the band even more. And I just like when it comes to Cats and each one of the individual guys in that band, they are so solid yeah. and so heartfelt, and that's why the music is so amazing. And, and you can see that same thing with Pacific Range. Yeah, you can you can see feel it. it. Yeah. Yeah. You can see they have it. chemistry and each one of the guys are guys that you want to hug from and you want Aww. well you want to hug from them or you yeah. want to talk to talk about you want to be friends with these guys they're so cool um when I when you on the show neil, when you pulled neil away from cats it made me realize like oh wow now i can really find out who mark is do you Ooh. know what i mean yeah. and then once i did and then i saw you know of course we had to see him where we really got to know each other was at the neil tributes which wasn't easy that was where we got to like be more like you know like recognize who each other are but now since I've seen him since then and I've got to just really study his playing because it was always for me I opened for for cats um acoustically down in uh Solano Beach not a couple years ago and man I just always loved that band I could have I mean, the last time I took acid was was uh, Neil's last show here at 420 Fest. Um, that was an incredible show. The live tape of it, Dan just remastered the the audio and put it on somewhere you can listen to. And I listened to it. There's also a video that my friend Kristen shot. Um, that's amazing. But that show, I just remember how inc- I stood right in front of the stage, right on the side of the stage and watched every note and I watched every change and it felt like I just, I never went away for a beer, never went to take a piss, never did anything. Ah, that's the I good was blown away by it. And, and uh, it was just a real great moment. And um, that's, yeah, seeing them, that would be, that'd be a great band to see. Wouldn't well, love to see them. I, I was going to get real deep, but I don't want to. It's okay. That's, I, I just want, I, I just, it was, you don't know how proud I was. And I'll just tell you, I will tell a secret about Neil. He, you know, like there was these two guys that were walking out behind me and went like, wow, that was some legit shredding, you know? And I was like, that's so funny because, you know, I know Neil was like, he wants to be Jackson Brown. That's what I knew, Neil. That's how, when I met Neil, I didn't know him going to be Jerry Garcia, but he, I saw Neil after that show and I was tripping a little bit and I was like, dude, you guys really, it's just, ah, no, ah, I, it was a huge, I did like this show. I like our new sound man, but he just would not take a compliment, you know, Mm -hmm. and it wasn't in a weird way. He didn't want me to say it twice. He just was like, he just couldn't see like just how incredible like now the four of us are sitting here talking about it and it's not just him, it's the band, but that, you know. Yeah, it's a yeah, lot. It's hard. <laughs> and there's no words. No, no, no. no. no fucking lyrics. No. Brent, no, is it, is it easy for you to accept compliments like that? Like when somebody's like, damn man, you know. Oh, not- I just say you're crazy and I just walk away. <laughs> but do you see how hard it is? It's so hard to realize what an impact your creativity has brought someone else. 
because you're always so self-conscious of what you put out. So once somebody compliments that, you're like, what? You're like trying to cover it up again. But you you know what? The bigger the show and the bigger the like triumph, the harder it is. It really is. It's Mm -hmm. like I've because I have opened for so many bands and I remember then I stay around to watch the headliner. Then you see this band that's been on tour for six months, two months, whatever, for their whole lives, basically. And you get up, hey, that was a fucking great show. They just look at you like you're out of your fucking mind. Uh, you know, you know, like <laughs> telling the Black Crows, that was a great show tonight. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I don't want to hear it. that. They've already been playing. So I know kind of the bigger the show, the harder it is to accept. But, uh, you know, Neil is different because he was, was one of those guys. He's in the rock and roll world. He's had a lot of record deals. He He's in the business. He knew, you know, he had his booking agents and managers and he had his successes and failures and he was like the prototypical like you know well he was definitely sung and and you know as a guitar player he, he but as a as a singer songwriter that was where he really hadn't got his like elevated above kind of like cult status you know and the fan he knew every one of his fans by name and that is fine that is great but i think he really would love to get out where you like what i was what i told him and i he's gonna kill me when he because i know he's listening and I'm right. he's actually keeping the dogs quiet because they usually bark a lot but he's gonna kill me for this but i told him i said neil you're like i won't mention names of like these singer songwriters who are huge right now huge Band, you know, like your Sturgill Simpson or somebody like that. I'm just like, or or, or the other guy who was in Drive By Truckers. Um, I can't remember his name, but these are guys that kind of come from the Americana world, but kind of not. But they just have their bands, and people know them as songwriters, and they sell five thousand seats in this theater or whatever. And I'm like, Neil, that's going to be you. You're gonna your new solo album is coming out, and you are going to be that guy and I'm speaking like I'm in that movie The Idol Maker or some like crazy like <laughs> it's honestly like some bullshit thing but I was like I can see it I see the lights going down and I see this like ne- Neil play with Ryan right for all those years Ryan Adams that I said you're going to be as big as him and you deserve it because now you're going to bring in all your people f- that you all your fans that have come up that you learned that learned about you through CRB and through Circles Around the Sun, and then your solo bands and all the other bands you played in, not to mention hardworking Americans, skillful players, Gospel Beach, you know, whatever. You're gonna bring all, all that's gonna come together and it's gonna be they're not gonna say Neil Cassell, they're gonna say that's Neil Cassell. It's gonna be incredible and you're gonna win a fucking Grammy and you're gonna have everything that you ever wanted and you're probably going to end up hating yourself because of it or whatever but hey, and then you're exactly who he needed at his back yeah that well that's the guy yeah, that then what happened the that's you win. know well i think what happened was nobody's Nobody control saw that shit well that was out of everyone's control you know nobody knows anyone else's private freaking thoughts but you do know? you ask no well they're not going to tell you. I was yeah, going to say, say, even if you ask, that. you know, there's no guarantee the answer is going to be straight. Or maybe they told you three quarters of it. You know what I'm well, saying? John Prine, Hello in There, that great mm-hmm. song. You know, it's like, you, you know, how often do we really say like, hey, hello in there? How, you know, like, yeah. like you What's know. The, eyes? Yeah, like, you know, there's a lot, you know, the guy, one of my favorite bands, Badfinger. I love that band because not just because they were on the Beatles label, but they just made incredible melodic rock songs and incredible songwriter Pete Ham and you know he committed suicide over you know money and and just like what am I going to do I don't know what it is everybody always says it's over money but but money doesn't make you do that but it's your head man it's yeah but it's like you know how offering telling Neil he's going to be you know that telling Neil he's telling him what I told him that, that obviously he probably chuckled and laughed and he knew that I would take it with a grain of salt, but I, I would, I would try my hardest to make that happen. And I honestly believe that he, we all know it's true now because, you know, his records are selling and everybody knows who yeah, he is. Everybody and, knows now. But I just, you know, I, I guess, I guess to really reach somebody who's that hurting, 
it's it's beyond like our our thing it's beyond you know putting a sticker in with a record or or saying hey how you doing or you know you know even beyond one hello up. there it's you know what i mean it's beyond one good conversation yeah one good conversation leads to maybe four or five down the line where you even think to maybe possibly the mention only thing it, that you know? i can equate that to is being strung out on dope and yeah. somebody coming to you and asking if you want to quit doing dope, I, I obviously the answer is no. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you've ever been strung out on dope, like I have been, it's been like, oh, yes. Oh my God. I'd love that. It, but inside, no, no, no. Hell no. this is the most terrifying fucking take thought. Take my dope away from me. I'm going to uh, you up. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. But yeah. yeah, I can, I think about it like that. Like I'm not going to go tell everybody why about your darkest, why thoughts. my, yeah. father, I have a compulsion or whatever. And do you know what? You, you might be touching on something and I, um, this is being recorded, so I'm probably going to be a big laughing stock and we can I always take edit a psychology whatever. class, but sometimes somebody who brings so much joy and friendship into everybody's life, the only thing that could possibly feel good was to have a dark thought. Or a dark, or something oh, hidden. Wow. They could, somewhere they could go to. Because yeah. Neil was universally loved, adored. Mm -hmm. He he'd never had to worry about money because somebody's always going to fix him a meal. Just the girls alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. The guy. You know. You, man, you know never what? Heard it's so bad. true because I could never write a song about being lonely because nobody nobody <laughs> ever would want to leave him alone. Leave him alone. You know the girls were lining up and friend you know and guys too me you know shoot i'll wash your red cords neil i love that guy right. i would do anything for him and, and i don't even know why <laughs> <laughs> he was you that guy he was Dude, that likeable. see there's just people that are allowed to be like that well and and that That's, he's yeah. right i think he's right that there's got to be balance in life and yeah those of us that have a dark passenger understand that you know? yeah, like, well, we all have a dark passenger man we do yeah but he didn't like he would come to me and like i but since i knew him i got strung out on dope i i i had i had before i met him the the whole way beachwood sparks started for me was like a psychotic uh drug episode speed and i ended up twice with suicide attempts you know and i lived through both of them and um, obviously they weren't good enough and they weren't real or else I, would be, I wouldn't be here talking to you. But, right. you know, he knew my past and he knew that I was like, you know, like in my 20s, 30s, not my 20s, but my 30s and 40s, I was really tortured and very fragile. And I wasn't the person that you're talking to now. And it wasn't, it was only from becoming, you know, like my, my meeting, my wife who we're just we live together as friends now we're not even really married anymore um but she really saved me you know and starting to listen to my dad and you know i i actually did change my life and and was able to live through things that other people that i know weren't able to live through and neil i've, I've lost a lot of friends to suicide i've lost way many more friends to alcohol um, thank God I get migraines and I can't drink too much. You know, I can have a Miller light here and there, you know, Good. <laughs> perfect for picnics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's great. That's filling. Right. <laughs> so my whole thing with gospel beach is like my, if, if I was really trying to infiltrate a scene, I just want to be like, you know, regular guy rock, you know, like classic rock circa 1978, 79. Like, that shit is too cool, man. Yeah, that's all I care about, you know, and there's no market for it. <laughs> you know, nobody cares about it. But every man rock is what I really dig and dad rock, I guess, because I never had kids. But but that those things that I lived through and then that sadness, that that like ability to like not be able to see to tomorrow and say, like, I'm just going to be gone and it doesn't hurt and I'm not scared or whatever. I'm so glad that I made it through that. And, you know, Neil, l Neil losing we all lost Neil and, and then my father passed away and then I, my marriage ended and those three things, man, they just were like, okay, f you're an idiot, man. I just really realized like all those cool little things that people thought, oh, I like that song you wrote and those fragile moments, and those way, that way of life. It's, it's such, it's, it's, it's kind of, you can't control it when you're in it. But looking back on it now, it's a, now I know why, like, my brother, who's super smart, laughed at me during all that. He helped me, of course, but he was like, come on, dude, really? So it's like, you know, you, 
you know, getting through it is, is, uh, is to me is the best thing. And, and just finding like, finding, finding something simple can be so gratifying later on in life, you know, that where all you wanted was the, not the riches of, the, not, not wealth, but just the things that you think they're going to make you happy. And then, things. yeah, they don't make you happy. And then you, uh, the simplest thing in the world, talking to you guys is incredible right now. I know, awesome. yeah, man. It's, yeah. I feel the so. The longest good. conversation I've had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish we could reach out and. I know. I know. Dude, that's what we talk about the most. We're all, this whole community is a bunch of hug. I mean, it's going to be a hug fest. Once yeah. we're allowed to start, because our community, we don't care. I mean, not that we don't care, That's but a, we don't <laughs> yeah, care. We, how you, how you we believe the same apple. thing. We're, we're all thoroughly believe that uh, this Corona thing, it's already gone through. We all had it. It was like the flu. It was like the cold. We're over it. I get in trouble at work. We're hugging people here because certain people don't care. I don't care. We give each other hugs all the time. If you were here, I'd fucking hug you right now. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, trying to keep us apart and ain't gonna last too much longer. No, nope. can, can I? Can you guys like? Okay, so you were like worried about saying like not worried, but like when you're hesitant to say something that you believe, like Pacific Range. I I wanted them to do a like a stream thing, and then I was like, people were like, oh, but all four of them have to be together, and I was just like, you're fucking kidding me. Wow. And so we actually had texts where we said, you know what? Just at the risk, because you are a new artist and we are a new label, shoot, man, we actually can't flaunt. We use the words flaunt, a, a gathering of me holding the camera and them playing the music. Even if they're six feet apart? I, I, you know, you can't, you can't, you got to be closer than that when you're playing music. And I just, just like doing you, something. You don't know where people are sensitive or at. That's yeah. the thing. And one person, one rogue person, those will always have the loudest mouth. Yeah. So and they'll I, look like what they did. Did. I do understand their, like, if I, I, I want them, I want everybody to have, I definitely want them to have a different opinion than me because then it gives us something to talk about. Of course. I, I was like, I, I love, like, the best thing in the world is to be in a band with guys and then you like somebody that they don't like. You know, you're going to pull oh, yeah. a brown tape on tour and they're like, oh no. And I'm like, you're going to yeah. like this because I'm going to make you like this <laughs> <laughs> or, or whatever. It's like, I don't want everybody. Oh yeah, put that in because then it doesn't sound as good to me. If I know everybody in the world loved it. <laughs> well, Jackson's a bad example, but well, he had Corona. So we, we're, we can talk about him. Yeah, no shit. Right? Living proof that we're going to be okay. We are going to be we okay. Are without gonna be without okay. any disrespect to anybody who's lost anybody because yes, I don't think yeah. you've lost somebody to suicide or drugs or drinking or corona or to any of the diseases that we've mentioned in this conversation. Yeah. We're all going to die. You know, I, I'm definitely going to. You know you what? Like, are you sure? This is uh, <laughs> and while, while you're living, while you're living, keep on living. And we're going to, like you said, you've learned, you've had a lot of mistakes. We all have. So yeah, we, we have. And we're going to continue to make them. And yeah. I'm going to say the fucking wrong thing. I know I am. Well, I say the wrong, I say things offensively sometimes. It's not well, meant that way. There was too many bands on Skull and Roses. So like, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll re I'll that. rewind it. Or I always like to take the blame for it because nobody's okay. going to be mad at me for too long. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> well, well, I was just going to say like, that's, thank you so much for coming on. And yeah, spending no, time. thank you for having me. I mean, yeah. I, just, I know it was, it was, I just like to have a talk. I think um, I was a little nervous coming on because I, I didn't have an agenda. I know that I wanted to connect with some of Neil's people out there and I definitely wanted to connect to some um, of the community in, um, in the Grateful Dead world because uh, I, I feel like I'm a part of it, but I'm in the kind of part of it where it's like um, one of the most, I think a dream concert of mine was Tom Petty with Bob Dylan Tom Petty and Heartbreakers with Bob Dylan sharing a bill with the dead. And, <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, I mean, come on. Those are the three. That's, that's all you need. That's, that's huge. Like, America. All my America. Yeah, yeah, that's Americana I, right there to the heart. I could keep my Petty records, keep my Dylan records and keep my dead records. Then you can take the rest. All right. Man. We'll be hanging out well, soon. You know, man, what's amazing sure. right now, this time you it's, this has been happening for like a month now, right now, like you said, you're coming on here. We've, interviewing musicians just friends right nobody has nothing to promote right now it's so honest you're at home with your dogs all jumping around it's different than it was so to me that's the silver lining of this 
You know what I mean? Yep. You're promoting curation records and your son, but, but there's not like, yeah, man, next week, you know, it, it's kind of different right now. And when we yeah, get, yeah. I don't know, when we get through this, it's going to be, <laughs> right. we're all, we're all going to explode. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot to tell you. I here comes all the tour dates and the links and the. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no shit, right? Here, I'll take her? you, man. All joking aside, though, no, seriously, when when, that, if, if people want to find Pacific Range, where can they find it? Just curationrecords.com. Okay. And then just, I, you know, here's, I, to me, it's all about like the connection. So just go to the Instagram or Facebook page, wherever you go and just look me up. I mean, I do them all anyway. So it's like, somebody's like, oh, wow, Curation Records liked my photo. It's like, well, really, Brent liked your photo. <laughs> <laughs> I just have more followers on Brent than I do on Curation. So it's like, but, but yeah, you're right. It's like, like, I, I, this is like Brian, Brian Hain reached out to you guys and he runs Raven's Reels and he's been like the guy that's made the whole, anything to do with the internet and curation, he's done it because he knows what he's do, fucking doing. Right. So he's like, hey, why don't, why don't we contact No Simple Road? I'm like, they don't want to talk to me. Let me talk to oh, Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Oh, now we've talked, it's rad. <laughs> well, now I only want to talk to you again. Once we get through this and Curation Records is blowing up, you come back on here. You know, uh, I, I think we definitely have and we, uh, and we another to, brother in the family yeah. now. We need to stay in touch. And, and we need to stuff. get Pacific Range on, too. Yeah, get Pacific Range on. Hell, you know, anything you need from us, you know, like, just let, let us, us know, know, man. Yeah, same here, man. Peace yep. and love to all three of you Thank and everybody you, else listening. I can't even believe this. We love you, man. Thanks for putting us into the Neil part too, man. That, that I think a lot of our listeners are really going to appreciate yep. that. Yeah, it's not the easiest to talk about, but it needs to be talked about. Yep. Those feelings are still really, really Raw. heavy. No, it's a four-part series. This was just part one. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah! Down. Part two down. once they announce the dates. <laughs> you really, I, the, the, and I'll save this. This is a teaser. The way, the, the very first thing, the very first thing that happened between Neil and I it was stay tuned. Yeah, oh. okay. I'll, I'll text it to you. I okay. like that. <laughs> okay. I like that. A, cliff, right a cliffhanger. Okay. We'll talk to you soon, love Brent. That. Take care of yourself, Brent, man. man. Thank Take you. Care, brother. Road. Yeah. Love you, brother. Love. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> oh. That's a solid brother right there. Wow. Right on. That's a that good is, motherfucker. That, that is, he, he's like that whole vibe of Mapache. That's that. That's that. California, LA, groovy like, motherfucker that vibe. That's that Chris Robinson. That's mm -hmm. the all the Neil. It's 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 and kind of gritty and it's gritty. Of Florida with uh, Chris and Adam. Yeah, yeah. left the Gulf. Yeah, to, man. It's a trip. It, you, I don't know, man. I I don't know if it's being stuck in the house so much lately, or not going out to shows, or what. But interviews are changing for me a lot. <clears throat> Talking to people like this, it's definitely different. Yeah. I, How is I, it different? I, I can you? feel it a lot more than I used to. More connected. Way more connected. And I can feel the roller coaster of the conversation happening. It's a oh, fucking trip. Like that. That's why I that. The, 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 the honesty. Everybody's being like, oh, my dogs. I mean, everybody, everybody is at home beyond fucking comfortable because at this point it's like i don't care if i'm wearing the third shirt through a day in a row <laughs> I mean, yeah. everybody is comfortable being themselves saying what they want to say i mean that this they're this is really cool that's like the silver lining to me this is really cool what we've been getting out of this and where we're going when this is over can i say something what stopped you before your mouth oh my god oh, i'm <laughs> just such the talker <laughs> What did you want to say? Are you ready? Five, four. I'm not going to do it. Okay. Gosh, Apple, you really know how to ruin a mood. I if I had a boner, it wouldn't be anymore. <laughs> what I noticed about you during these last few interviews is that you're not asking like prefab questions, like questions that you've asked other artists or whatever, anybody else, like, you're asking questions based on the content of the conversation, not on something that you might think about in your head. Hey listeners, 
I want to tell you about the April-May 2023 issue of Relics Magazine. It features a Dave Matthews Band cover story with additional articles and interviews with The National, Graham Nash, Wayne Shorter, ALO, Ivan Neville, our friend Eric Krasno and Stanton Moore, Marty Stewart, and much more. Check out the latest version of Relics and subscribe now at relics.com slash DMB. Thanks, Relics. I'll have to go back and listen. Yeah. I just noticed that his track didn't record, <gasps> but I have the audio from Zoom. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, Jesus. All right, you guys. We'll be back with more next week, and I'll uh, record the track, and I'll see you guys soon. We love you. We Everybody love you. Take care of yourselves. We'll be back with more stuff and things. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Hey, what's up? This is Blake Wyland. I'm the host of the Tone Mob podcast. It's a show where I interview guitar people about guitar stuff. We talk about their pedals, their amps, their accessories, their preferences, all that stuff, as well as a healthy dose of whatever comes up. Topics have ranged from aliens to addiction and anywhere in between. Oh yeah, and pizza. We're definitely going to be talking about pizza. So get the show wherever you're listening to this podcast at. Just search The Tone Mob in your search bar and it will pop right up. Come join us. We're having a lot of fun. Thanks for checking it out.